Hello and welcome to this very special discussion with uh, somebody I'm very fortunate to have, Peter Voza. He is the CEO of the largest company in the world, Shell or Royal Dutch Shell. Thank you so very much for being with us. A company that has turnover of about 300 billion last year. Before that, actually 460 billion, but the oil price brought it down to 300 billion. With profits of four, 13 billion could be higher this year. We'll soon find out what makes Peter Voza tick. First of all, sir, thank you for joining us. And why India? What's this visit all about? Yeah. First of all, thank you for, for having me here. It's a great You're pleasure. Welcome. India is in Asia. India is a growth country. India will need a lot of energy in the years to come, the decades to come. Hence, it is important for us as a growth market. So you're looking, your, your visit here in particular is looking for new avenues for growth in India, for investment in India? Yeah, I think there's two folds. The, the objective, one is to see what we already have and then actually to see what we can do more in order to participate in the growth and actually deliver more um, energy to, to the people of uh, India. And we have invested quite considerably already and we would already like to... Already a billion more. dollars? That's in correct, India? actually uh, a billion roughly and it, this is the highest amount a foreign multinational oil or gas company has invested in India. Yes, yes it has. Um, you are CEO of the biggest, not only the biggest oil company, the biggest company in the world. Many people say you're more powerful than many presidents and prime ministers. So, and you often talk about oil should be at a reasonable price. Those words you use, reasonable price, affordable price. What is a reasonable, affordable price in your opinion? The words you use, what, how does that translate for an ordinary person like me? Yes, it's obviously a very difficult one and I yes. don't know the answer at the end, right. but I think our objective is clearly to provide energy at an affordable price to the customer right. and hence for our very long-term projects we normally use an oil price between 50 and 90 dollars and long term in our industry means 20 to 30 years uh, where we put multi-billion dollars of investments into the ground right 50 to 90 uh, 50 to 90 dollars over the next 20 years you'd like to see it so today 80 to 90 is a bit on the upper end of that scale so is it a bit unreasonable no, I wouldn't say it's unreasonable. It's a, it's a price which the market has determined, which really reflects two factors at the moment. One is the expectations of a recovery of the world, which right. means more demand. Right. And on the other side, the OPEC, which is uh, um, many countries where they are together actually looking after a large part of the production in the world, they have determined to shut in some production, which really keeps a floor to the oil price because they are taking supply out of the market. Right, right, yeah. We'll come to uh, uh, the supply side, but uh, the third factor that affects oil price, and I want to ask you how important you think it is, but a lot of economists talk about it, is uh, what they call free money or cheap money in America where the interest rates are virtually zero so a lot of funds are going into speculative uh, areas like uh, commodity funds, oil funds, oil bonds. How important is that currently, this cheap money in affecting the oil price? I think uh, the so-called speculation money, I would not put too much weight into, into it at this stage. There were times in 2008 when the price actually went to $147. Right. There quite clearly you had a lot of fresh money going to the commodity market. Right. Commodities are interesting. It's not just oil and gas. Yes. It is also it food, etc. Exactly. And that attracts obviously investments. You can make returns, um, but I would not put, let's say, a great weight on that at this stage, it is much more the demand expectations and the OPEC.